did you know that you're, and this is going to sound dramatic, right? And it's, I'll just say, a person's character is their destiny. Now, there are other components, obviously, there are other forces that come into a person's life other than their character. But here's what that means. The way the Bible puts it is that it has to do with the tree, the tree meaning you, how you're made up, how you're glued together. The tree is going to produce fruit, and fruit is kind of the results we get in life, right? And how, we're, how the tree is doing is going to say a lot about what the results are, okay? And the way Jesus put it was, make the tree good. Because a bad tree cannot produce good fruits, and a good tree cannot produce bad fruits. So interesting. I know you guys are probably getting sick of my knee metaphors, but... Um, when my knee was pre-replaced last year, no matter how much I tried, that thing was screwed up. And no matter how much I tried to produce a good walk or a good gait or a walk without pain, it was not able to do it. Okay? Now, after I got it replaced, and I got the fake knee in there, the new one, sort of the redeemed knee in this metaphor, I get up and expect to limp or fall or walk, and, and it hurt, and I get up, and it, it doesn't hurt. It can't hurt by taking a step. It can't be off one way or another by taking a step because it's different. Okay, that's our, that's our character. And by character, I do not mean moral character only. Moral character is like a foundation that the rest of character is, you know, kind of stands on. But if somebody hadn't learned to not lie, cheat, and steal, then the rest of all their character traits aren't even going to matter because they're going to wreck their lives. You know, liars, cheaters, and stealers. Ah, how about that? Oh, you Pittsburgh fans. No, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> liars, cheaters, and thieves. That's just, that's not all of what character is. It's foundational. And without it, you're just screwed. But on top of that, there's a bunch of other stuff, like how we process failure, perseverance, courage. Delay of gratification, impulsivity, ability to connect, a bunch of different stuff, all right? Now, when we talk about character and it being our destiny, and it kind of determines how we're going to end up uh, performing in life, a little piece of that, okay, a little bitty piece of that, some people try to make more of this than you actually can. But a little, I say a little piece, a piece of that. It's not a small piece, but it's not the whole banana. A piece of that is the, is the tiny little things that you either think or do or feel. And by feel, I mean allow yourself to feel too. Tiny things you do think or feel that are tiny things, little bitty things, but little bitty things repeated become neurological and characterological and psychological structures inside of us. And the structure becomes the tree. And then that begins to determine our path and the kind of fruits that we're going to have. Now, a lot's been written on this in a lot of different arenas. What are some of the more simplistic ways of looking at this that you've seen popularized in recent years, if you're in all the pop psychology stuff, is there's a lot written on habits. You see a lot of people really, really writing on habits. Yeah. And that's really, really good. 
that's really interesting because a lot of the, a lot of the books are acting like, oh, that new discovery. Oh, really, it's kind of rat psychology from the 50s. Really, there's a, you know, that's what Skinner said. You got a, you got a cue, which cues you to a craving, which makes you do a behavior. And then there's a reward and that tends to happen again. All right. Well, great. Once. But you do something twice. Three times. Four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times, nine times, all the time. See, it has become a habit. All right. Great example. When you establish a pattern, we're doing New Year's resolutions. Okay. Some of you have said, I'm going to change this year. I'm going to get up every morning at six, which, if I don't have to, not happening. I'm a night owl, but I have to a lot of times. I can do it. But you've committed. That's your plan. It's not my plan, but it might be your plan. You're going to get up at 6, and you're going to go to the gym, or you're going to go for a walk, or you're going to go ride the bike, or you're going to have a quiet time, or you're going to do something. And the first three days, four days, you do it. Five days, six days, seven days. Now we're into day, what, uh, five? Yeah. The next morning, the alarm goes off. Yeah, I just don't feel like today. I'm going to sleep in. All right. Fine. There's no such thing as perfection. Great. Enjoy your snooze. Tomorrow morning, alarm goes off. Yeah, I just don't feel like I'm going to sleep in. Now you have entered different territory because you have repeated a small thing. And the likelihood that you're going to get up on day three is much greater if you got up on day two and skip day one than if you skip day one and because of that skip day two. Because now you've started a little thing that's turning into a chain of behaviors. So you come home at night, you sit down and you start to watch a show, you want to veg a little bit, and that's fine. I mean, you do that. But then one night you decide to binge and watch two or three episodes and two or three more. And then the next night you kind of do that. And the next night, see, it gets easier and easier. And any, whether it's how you respond to your spouse, whether it's you, you want to, you're trying to build your dating life. You get a lot of dating calls and somebody says, well, I want to, I'm going to, I'm going to try to do this match and go out on this person, even you can go out with this person, even though I think it, and then you do it and whatever happened that time, you didn't like it. So now it's next time. and you hit a little resistance and you go, nah, I'm not going to do this this time. You have started a pattern. It's little by little, by little, by little, by little, by little, by little that we establish patterns, which becomes, which patterns become identity and DNA. And that becomes a long-term path. Give you a, a a great example that I hear all the time. I was talking to a young man that I mentor just the other day. And I was talking about he wanted, you know, he's he's in what 20 years old or so. And one of the areas that he wants mentoring is in finances and how people get to be, you know, financially secure. And so we're talking about a lot of a lot of elements of that. And I was talking about, well, first of all, it never starts with money. Money's not the issue. Your character logical patterns are the issue. They're gonna determine really long-term financial well-being. And so we're talking about a bunch of those. And the I think the second one that I talked to him about after the first one being faith, the second one being giving. And I said, let me tell you a truth. I said, do you want to give? He said, yeah. I mean, this is a really, really giving kid. I mean, he serves people. He has a great heart and all that. But here's what what I've seen. 
I can't tell you how many people, and these are successful people, with all the outward trappings of success. Now, I'm not talking about the multi-zillionaires, but I'm talking about people that have successful lives. You know, they, they own a home, and they got a family, and they're doing this, and they're doing that. And they're always kind of, kind of, and they may not have a family, but they're, they're doing fine, okay? And I hear this over and over and over and over and over. They'll say, well, you know, I'm, and they've got some, some project or something they're working on. They say, you know, well, I want to make some money because, because I'd like to make some money so I could give back and give away. And I go, what are you giving now? What have you given for the last five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years? Well, I'm, I'm waiting until I've got, you're not going to do it. It just, I mean, it happens, but it is rare. What you see is people that are givers give when they're making a thousand bucks a month. It, they may not give much, but they give and those little bitty habits. And then when they start making millions, they tend to continue to give and they give more. It's our patterns of the tree. Same thing with savers. Same things with husbands and wives. Little bitty patterns about how you respond. Do you return a sharp remark with kindness or another sharp remark back? Do you get up and you're getting in the car and you look at the trash thing, you go, oh, I ought to take that out to the street. Uh, uh, I'll wait. The little bitty things, little by little by little by little by little by little by little, that is how destinies are formed. So I just want you to think about some, and let's go back to the word habits, which is a very popular one. Today. There's a lot of good books out there on it. But if you can just establish very, very tiny little habits, and I'm talking about tiny little habits. In fact, I think there's even books written on tiny habits. What, who was the researcher? Fog, Frog, Fog or Frog from, I think, Berkeley. Tiny habits? So, I don't remember the, the name of it. But little bitty things, little bitty things that once you start them, they can change your life. How many of you brush your teeth before you go to bed? You don't even think about it. But you had to think about it because mom or dad or somebody made you begin to establish a pattern and now it's delegated to another part of your brain that you do it automatically anyway so that's kind of the word for the day i want you to watch the little things that you do and pick some little things and just do a few little things that can start you down a path to make this a totally different year take a little walk you know take a big one take a little one that's all spin You've been saying you're going to develop your spiritual life? Spend five minutes, little things. Spend five minutes reading the Psalms or read the book of John or something. Just five minutes. Just start a little thing. See what happens. Take your kid around the block. Oh, we're going to go on a big vacation and spend time together. No, that's what not what great parents do. Once a year, spend time with their kid. No, they do little things every day little things 